All right, guys. Um, I did this video yesterday, but I was in the process of uploading it, and then I saw that the lighting was terrible. So, redoing it now. Uh, but I guess I got to include last night's game against New Orleans, where the Bulls got smacked. Here's the deal, man. This team is shit. I'm sure I don't need to really say that, but this team is shit. Terrible. But we knew this last year. The only difference with last year is this team became shit when Lonzo left due to injury. And they had an entire offseason to somewhat address the issues with the team which I stated ahead of time that nothing had been addressed and I expected more of the same and what did he fucking do? We're 15 games in with a record of 6 and 9. Wink, wink for all the people with those 6 9 jokes. And this team is so much worse than what they were last year. Like it's almost you almost can't fathom how bad they are. So, this time last year, they were like 11 and 4. Okay? The only losses up to this time that they had that I remember, if I, if they research me correctly, is Golden State, the two Philly games, and the Knicks. Those are the only losses they had thus far. Um, I believe they played the Nuggets after the Lakers which would have been, you know, game 15. I could be wrong about that. Um, or it might have been important. But either way, they were, they were in a much better situation. They'd already had double-digit wins. The, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not even close, right? They are far cry from what they were. And even with this point, starting Tony Bradley at center and we had So Vucevic well Vucevic was out, I'm sorry, we had So DeMar and Zach Levine and they were doing just fine they had, that, like that was the big three and So was during that stretch averaging like 18 19 points a game like 8 or 9 assists 8 or, eight or 6, like he was he was legit giving you third guy energy. Like he 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 did his thing, and Demar and Zach were doing their thing. This is with Zach having that finger ligament issue last year, and they were still better than they were now. And I don't even think they had Kobe yet. I don't think they had Kobe. Yet. I could be wrong on that one. But I don't think Kobe was available quite yet. I'm pretty sure one of you guys will, you know, correct me in the comment section. He was, if you guys didn't do. But we didn't have Vooch. We didn't have Paul. We didn't have Kobe. And Vooch was out because of COVID. He wasn't out because of his, like, all necessary He was out because of COVID. And we still were killing this year, the difference is you got everybody except Kobe again. You got Andre Drummond and Drogic, you know, and so you got a better backup center by all accounts. You got rid of, you don't have Troy Brown Jr., but you got Drogic, who is, has been honestly better. You even got Paul healthy. And the only missing ingredient is love. So now you might say, well, you know, Zach Bean is hobbled and hurt still. Okay, but he was hurt last year. So we can, we can decide on, like, whether the, you know, thumb injury or whatever is worse for him or better for him than, you know, the knee injury or whatever. We can have that debate some other time. But the point is, he was hurt last year. 
and we were still winning. I don't get this. Actually, I do get this. I know exactly what it is. I mean, this team is 23rd in rebounding. They're averaging 52 rebounds a game. For a measuring stick, the Bucks are number one with 60 rebounds a game. And I think the next closest team to them was like 57, 58 rebounds. Bucks were, is the number one team in the East. And they get on the boards. I have a series to do about the Ports rebounding coming up over the uh, Thanksgiving holidays since I have free time. And so I'll be, you know, tackling some some issues and some things with the Bulls during that time. Because, hell, you know, I ain't got nothing else to do. It's the perfect time for me to, you know, be able to get into more video making. Because, like I said, I've been hella busy this year. Like, I've been hella busy at work. But it, it's, it's, this is what it is, man. Like, this is the Bulls. They were shit last year when someone went out there shit now. This thing, I've said this before, you can get by with maybe having one guy that don't play defense. You cannot get by with three guys not playing defense. You absolutely can. And you absolutely cannot get by with three guys playing defense and not having Caruso back there to support them. Because you have basically probably the two best point of attack defenders in the league. And even if you don't think you have the two best, you have Caruso who's probably the best. And Lonzo was the best free safety defender in the league because you can go watch highlights of Lonzo literally covering for the mistakes of teammates. There's this one play, and I can't remember who it was against. It might have been against Portland. But Vooch literally went to go double, got out of position, and it left his man open. And so read the pass and intercepted the pass. So stopped Fuchs' fuck up, or saved Fuchs' fuck up to be a turnover play for the Bulls to go down there and get some points. This is the stuff that's missing from Zo. And it works with like that because you can have Caruso play at the point of attack, and it allows for Zo to use all of his natural instincts and skills to aid the team. He's probably the best on the team and knowing when to leak off of his guy and go attack the blind side of the big with the ball, or, or anybody with the ball for that matter, but particularly the bigs. So would go leak off and like smack the ball out of the big's hand and they're off on the, on the break because he just understands positioning. He understands timing, okay? That's IQ, that's a feel for the game. This is the stuff that they were talking about him when he first came out of college. Not necessarily for defense, but his understanding of the game, his IQ, his feel for the game being high. That situational awareness. Those are those intangible things that we talk about when we become basketball players. That's so showing that stuff. And now you guys are seeing it. You know, it, it's live and it's live and well right now. The agenda is, is beautiful. For a while it was, oh, are you better? Now it's like, oh, when can, when can we get so back? When can we get so back? Right, because Io can't do what he do. He just can't. Nobody on the team can replicate Lonzo. So when I said Zoe was making a new position, when I was sitting there talking about his skill set, harping on about things like, okay, the better the tools around him, the better his skill, his skills are going to be showcased. This is what I mean. You see this fucking team, this ragtag bunch of guys that were literally being held together because of Zoe. Because of Zoe. Now, I'm not saying Zoe comes back and fixes all the issues. And yes, the team is like top six in defense. I get that. But your top six in defense, where you have very many exploitable defensive holes. Meanwhile, you can play Zoe Caruso with those guys, and they can, one, do a lot of the damage on the ball, and then whatever damage Caruso can't do on the ball, Zoe can do off the ball. So and Caruso would take and shut down your top two scorers. And that means Zach had the third best guy, which means that was less on him to have to do because he don't play defense anyway. But it's easy to play defense on the third guy that probably isn't anywhere close to as good as the first two, which means Zach's defensive efficiency goes up. 
and DeMar is also playing defense on the fourth best guy, but that means you have to make a concerted effort to go target DeMar DeRozan. But this year, you got plays where Vooch is literally scared to just go after it because he's going to get blown by. I'm sitting here and I'm watching this guy. He needs to go on a closeout, and he don't want to get on a closeout because he knows the minute he goes to contest and he jumps for the pump fake, it's over. He's not getting back on defense. Good game. You can't win when your center is, one, not mobile, and two, afraid to move. The guy just refuses to move. And quite frankly, last year, the first 10 games, he was leading the league in deflections. Nowhere to be seen since. There was a lot more effort and care put into Vucevic's play last year on the defensive end, at least in the beginning of the season, than it is now. And yes, that has hurt the team, but Fuchs don't want to play defense. And what are you supposed to do without rim protector, right? What are you supposed to do when positions two and three don't guard? Those are basically mean positions. What are you supposed to do when they don't guard? And like, yeah, sure, you got Paul, but are we really going to say Paul is on the level of so and so? Absolutely not. And Caruso has done a good job defending him. I mean, not Caruso. Paul's done a good job of defending. I'm not trying to take any way, anything away from him for that. You know, he's definitely done a good job. But it, there's a difference between doing a good job and being all-world defenders, which is what Zoe and Caruso were for you last year. And then this team is like 23rd in offense, or 25th in offensive rating, I should say. 25th. Twenty fifth, a team that has Nikola. About to say, yeah, Nikola Vucevic. I almost said Nikola Jokic. Demar Derozan and Zach Levine is twenty fifth in offense. You got guys like Mark K that blocked me and a couple others on Twitter. You got guys like this on your team. Zach Levine, your DeMar DeRozan's, your Vucevic's, who can't do enough on offense. How does this happen? So, like, this team is just bad all around, man. If you don't get rebounds, sure. You're top of defense, but you can't score off of it. And I would wager, I'd be willing to wager the only reason they're good on defense is because they don't play top offenses. They got crushed last night by the Pelicans. A Pelicans team on a back-to-back. -back. They had just played Memphis the night prior on a back-to-back -back with no Zion, and you got beat. By what's the guy's name? I think his name is Trey Murphy. The third. Like, that they lost. You're fresh. You had two nights rest and you lost to the Pelicans on a back-to-back -back with no Zion? You The last game, you had three days rest after playing like three games in four nights. And you didn't have enough energy and you lost that game. This team is garbage. Beyond garbage. Right? 
And I was listening to the, you know, Casey Johnson and Jared Goff and them talk about, you know, Lonzo coming back and the expectations. And it's like, I agree with them. Like, you know, you got to fix this stuff before Zoe gets back because you're expecting Zoe to basically be a world lift and carry. But here's my thing, right? Okay, if Zoe has this kind of impact, see, I was the only person saying this on, at all on Twitter or on YouTube. I said Zoe has outplayed his first contract in his first year, his first year. Yes, he only played 30 games. People can be like, what the fuck do you mean? Absolutely. Look at this team with him versus without them. They literally look like the best team in the league with him. They are a 11th seed without him. Think about this. You go from being number one seed to drop in 10 seeds. What kind of players does that happen for? Uh, I'll give you an example. LeBron and his prime. Dirk Nowitzki. Kobe Bryant. That's the impact level that you're basically saying is always had. When your team goes from number one to bottom four, And if I'm Zoe, when it comes time for negotiations for a contract, I'm referencing this. Look, y'all were winning. By the time I left, you know, we were like 20-something and 15, 20-something, 13, whatever the fuck it was. I don't remember. I don't care at this point. But without me, you guys have been shit. You lost more games than you won. You were on pace for over 50 wins, like 55 wins, and then when I went out, you only got to 46. Now you start the new season, you're starting off 6-9. and nine. Where the year before, you had already reached double digits. You hadn't even gotten five losses yet. That was with injuries to your key, some of your key players. You're big. You, you went from having a before, you know, like top five, maybe center in the league at that time to like a not even like bench rotation big and you were still able to win games. And this is with him missing passes on the pick and roll. It's Tony Bradley. And they still won with him, man. Well, you know, the Lakers weren't that good. The Clippers were okay, but they didn't make the play game. But the Clippers still had a winning record. And they had Paul George. It's just a fact, man. It is what it is. And we should be we should be okay with calling this shit out, man. Look. The Bulls, the Bulls suck. And Billy Donovan being fired should start. He should, he should start cooking. This should, this should be trending every night. Fire BD. Because there's no way your team is not ready to, to play. Essentially with five different. There's two games you played in five days. There's no way your team is not ready to play both nights. No way. And there's no way for a team that has DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Nikola Vucevic to be 25th in offense. No way. Top 15 at worst. Top 15 at worst. But no way it should be this. And and, and Acme and Reinsdorf's fans should be looking at them too because you put this shit together. You don't even have a pick this year. You can't tank. You don't have a pick this shit to tank with. And you're not good enough to contend for a title. You can't contend this year. You're not good enough to contend for, to tank. You, you can't contend and you can't tank. And you didn't want to spend money to get a team around these guys to, like, help them win. You're relying on Javante Green and Derrick Jones Jr., 
Caruso off the bench, even though Caruso is, is better than those two guys, and that's okay. Drogic, you know, these are the guys you're having to rely on. Meanwhile, you got other teams that are actually rolling out legit role players that are versatile that can win you games. Sure, our defense off of our bench comes in and they do us justice. Hell, I think our bench has a positive net rating over our starters, which is insane. But we cannot sit here and and say this is acceptable for a team that was expected to be top five, top six again this year. Even without Lonzo, the expectation was for this team to win games. And so far in the first 15 games, that hasn't been the case. So. What do we do about this? Like I said, firing Billy Donovan should be on everybody's ticker. I know I was pretty early to the party with that one. But. At this point, you guys should not be able to argue me down about Billy Donovan anymore. He he should be on the hot seat. That's number one. Number two, trade deadline. Some, somebody got to go. Somebody has to go to get the parts to win. I see them mentioning Duncan Robinson for a trade. Look, man, shooting is an issue, but we don't need guys that don't defend. It's stuff like that that pisses me off. Like, yeah, we need we can use Duncan Robinson, even though his numbers are peasantry this year. Like they're shit. But yes, we need we need a guy that can shoot. But not at his amount. I think he's getting paid like 16 a year. Yes, trade DeMar might need to happen or trade Zach Levine, which I don't think you could do this year anyway. Vooch is on the last year of his contract, so that's a nice little expiring deal. Look, you might have to move something. One of your big pieces you might have to let go. And by the way, you only got one more year of DeMar. There's some team out there that would use him or could use him and would pay a nice little deal for him. Get some nice young players and picks and maybe can facilitate some other plays or some other deals and you can go start building like this is supposed to be Zach's team, which by the way, let me ask you something. Whose fucking team is this? Who's the leader of this team? Well, DeMar's the best player, but this is supposed to be Zach's team, but Zach don't even take the, like whose team is this really? That's another issue, is the hierarchy for this team. We don't even know who fucking team it is. On paper, it's Zach team. In action, it's DeMar team. It's pathetic, man. But hey, Lonzo got to come in and say this shit, right? The Zoe agenda is live, man. It, it, like, and I seen it was Pelicans accounts taking shots at, at at you know the Bulls last night. That's cool. Y'all can take your little shots. You know, just remember he put that triple double on y'all head game two last year. Just remember that. Just remember that. But what I can't say about the Pelicans this year is that they suck because they damn sure don't. They are formidable for sure. Injuries or not, they still can win games. They got a solid ass bench. They got some shooting around them. So I will give you because y'all y'all have a good team this year. I can't even front. Even though we got that ass last year. But that was last year. But look at this, man. The Pelicans couldn't even say shit last year. They had to take their L. Now we got to sit here and say, hey, look, man. Pelicans, they did that thing. They did that thing, man. Anyway, y'all have a good one. Peace.